In today's video, I'm really excited to do a second video for Lightship ARDK, where I'm going to be introducing you to meshing with this technology. This is really cool because not only this works with iOS by using uh, iPhone 13 Pro, which has LiDAR, which we know that works really well by using meshing, but we're also going to be using it by using a Google Pixel in Android. This works because ARDK has their own algorithms. They have a lot of really powerful tools. And I'm going to show you how to also be able to mock some of the meshing functionality within the Unity editor. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. If you go into ARDK and then extensions and prefabs, we're going to be adding the AR scene camera and I'm also going to be adding the AR scene manager. Once you do those two, we're going to have basically an augmented reality camera and then a manager that is going to keep track of the AR session and everything that we need to do in order for us to be able to to use segmented reality with ARDK. And then because we're going to be building this to Android, I'm going to make sure that I have these components. So just gonna search for Android and permissions requester. And this is gonna allow me to basically request the camera. And then once you do that, if we want to add meshing, all you really need to do is just drag and drop the component, which is under extensions and meshing, and then drag and drop the AR mesh. I would probably name this one something like AR Mesh Manager instead of the just AR Mesh. I think it, it kind of makes more sense if we do that. There's gonna be a lot of different settings in here that we can change. This is gonna be, you know, how frequently the mesh is going to be generating. So if we want to generate 20 times per second, you can set it to 20. I think what I what I what they recommend is that you do something from 10 to 15. So I think last time I did 15 and it performed pretty well. I'm using an iPhone 13 Pro and I'm also using a Google Pixel, which is the one that I'm gonna be showing you today. And then once you do that, there's a couple other things in here that you may want to look at. If you look at, for instance, a mesh chunk, this is gonna be the component that is going to contain the mesh. It has a mesh render and it also has this really cool mesh normal freshness, which the ARDK team provided to you. And if you wanna test that, you can also right click in here, just make sure that the material works. I had issues with this material working on, you know, before doing this video, so I had to change everything to a standard pipeline. It should work with URP, but it didn't render in Windows. So long story short, just make sure that you test it. And, you know, if, if you have issues, just make sure that you let me know in the comments. But you can test it by just adding, you know, we can add a sphere here and then just drag and drop this material. And then if everything looks good, that means that everything is working. If it doesn't look good, it might be once you build it, it will look just fine. I like to make sure that it looks good because we're gonna be using something called the AR. Uh, it's gonna be like a mocking scene of the meshing. So we're gonna be mocking the meshing functionality inside of Unity. So I wanna make sure that I can render the, the actual mesh that we're gonna be mocking. So once you do that and, and you're happy with the, you know, with, with the setup that you have in here, you have the mesh chunk. So if you click on it, it's gonna take you where this is located. This doesn't have a collider in it, meaning that if we were to, let's say we wanted to shoot a ball and we want the ball to collide with the mesh that we're generating. If you use this one, this is basically gonna have the ball go through uh, the actual mesh. So if you wanna use the one with the collider, we can just go ahead and drag and drop this one. I'll show you that as soon as we go through some of the examples. So once you have that, that's pretty much all you need to do to add uh, meshing functionality. As far as like the component, we also need to go back into the AR camera and make sure that you add the AR depth manager. The AR depth manager, it's going to be the one that is gonna allow us to capture depth. So this is gonna have everything that you need to, you know, in order for you to capture the depth uh, through the camera. There's really nothing that you need to change in here. I mean, you can change some of these settings, but one setting that we need to change is we need to change this to none. Otherwise, the mesh is going to basically conflict with, with occlusion. But this is all we need for, in order for us to, to get meshing you know, started. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to also add another component that is going to allow us to, to look at this without building. And we can build it if we wanted to, but it's gonna take some more time to deploy to a device and, and you know, wait for that to happen and then launch it. So if you wanted to mock things, we can also add another game object in here. And this game object is going to be called, we can just call it mock mesh. I think that's what they call it in their examples. And then once you do that, we can also search in here for mock mesh script. And for the most part, everything is here already, you know, added. They already credit most of this. I'm just gonna be doing a little bit of coding at the end, but that's it. 
So time to discovery because we are mocking the mesh generation. This is gonna pretend that we're waiting, you know, two seconds until the mesh gets generated. Because normally when you're capturing a mesh through a device, the, the phone is to get awareness of the environment, uh, the depth camera needs to start functioning, and basically it's doing all the calculations. So there's gonna be some time and some delay. So you wanna make sure that you do this in a way that it kind of mimics the real experience. So we can just do something like 0.5 before the mesh starts to show. And then if you look at the mesh path, this is where it's the power comes in with what ARDK provides. We can basically use a, a mesh that was already generated by a scene that is also available in here, which is called a mesh saver. There's a mesh saver functionality available, which we'll cover in the next video. For now, we'll just use the one that it's available. So if you go into ARDK examples and we expand the, I think this is gonna be under mock meshes. So go into ARDK examples and then context awareness, meshing, and then mock meshes. There's gonna be a couple in here that you can use. I think last time I used the mesh underscore zero. We can generate these basically from a scene that they provide. Like I said, we'll cover that later for now. I think for what I need, for what you need, you can just get started with this. And then you can just right click in here and then basically just copy path. Once you do that, you can get back into the mock mesh and just basically just paste that path. So this is basically telling the script where the mesh it's going to be uh, located so that it can get generated in a mock when you hit play. So let's see if this works just by doing that. We can go ahead and hit play, make sure that this is going to start rendering. And what I'm doing, is I'm basically holding the right click on my mouse and uh, I am basically panning around. And if I use the my keyboard in W, I can go forward. If I go S, I can go backward. So this is really cool because we can, you know, we can basically start building functionality against a mock mesh that got generated by using, you know, a different process. But at the same time, this is gonna mimic very closely to how it will work in real life. So if we go back into the scene view, you're gonna see that this is just, you know, a mesh and all the objects in here are going to are going to look like how they will look like when you when you're basically doing this in the device itself. You got all your different chunks, and you can see the mesh filters in here, mesh render or normal, beautiful, fractional material is in here, and we can do we can do a lot of cool things because we're using the the Unity editor. So now that we have that, what if we wanted to change it to use a different mesh? We can do we can just basically do the same thing copy path, go into mock mesh, and then we can just make sure that you paste the path. I think I did that. If not, we can just go here and change this to four. And then all you need to do is just basically hit play, and then we should be able to see a completely different mesh because we selected a different one. And it looks like this one is just a larger area that kind of looks like a, like a pool perhaps, or, or uh, an abandoned building that somebody already scanned, but you can scan your own, right? And then just import it into Unity and be able to test it. So, okay, so now that we have that, what can we do with something like this? And well, what we can do now is we're gonna start like, you know, basically adding components that are going to collide with our mesh. So that's what I wanna do next. I want to add something called the AR Projectile Manager. And that's going to allow us to, to basically shoot, we're gonna be shooting different balls. And if we go into this project, and I'm not gonna make this available because this asset that I'm about to show you, it's a paid asset. For now, I'll just show it to you, you guys can get it. I'm gonna be putting the link of this asset in the description. But basically, this is just a set of assets that have different balls. And if we go in here, you're gonna see that they're just different balls and they have a mesh render, they have a rigid body because we're gonna be using physics to be able to shoot some of these different, uh, different balls. This is a football. And then they also have a mesh collider because we want to collide with the, with the actual mesh that we're getting generated or, or that we're mocking. So before I keep going forward, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, this is a demo of me running from my iPhone 13 right after I got the projectile created. We'll just go through the projectile creation as well so that I can show you, but I am basically scanning. Obviously this is running on an iPhone 13 Pro, so it's really, really fast and really powerful. Even my hand got rendered in there and as soon as my hand goes away, the polygon just kind of the depth camera starts to detect that the hand is no longer there, so it doesn't need to generate a mesh. You can kind of see that the balls, some of them are falling through because I think the mesh generation is just still happening. And we're just you know, getting my hand in there again. 
And if I go, if I go a little bit forward, you're gonna see that I have a bunch of different bowls all around my office. Some of them sitting on my left table. And if that was the real, if that was my real office, I would be freaking out because it's all disorganized. <laughs> I'm pretty picky when it comes to when it comes to the studio. But anyway, so that's meshing running on the iPhone 13. What I'm gonna do now though is I want to show you how we can run this in in my in my Android device, which is a Google Pixel. So again, this is very powerful, not only because it runs on an iPhone 13, we all know that the iPhone devices, they have very powerful capability, capabilities with ARKit, they have LiDAR, but I haven't had a chance to be able to use meshing with an Android device, and that's where the power it's gonna, it's com is coming to, because Lightship ARDK provides algorithms to be able to do meshing with the actual Android devices. So, let me go ahead and show you this. I'm using the, this application called SCRCPY that is gonna, gonna allow me to connect to my device in real time. So what I'll do is I have the device connected. You guys can see that in there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and open up a build that I already had created previously. I'm gonna go backward a little bit until it shows, there we go. You guys can see that it's running on my Google Pixel. And it's not as fast as my iPhone 13, but I'm pretty impressed because it's something that wasn't available and working on previous versions. So what I can do now, if I wanted to shoot a ball, you can see the machine, machine, basically the collisions are working, the physics, everything it's currently working. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and I start shooting different balls and we can probably just find an open area here, maybe right here, and then I'll just start shooting different balls in there. So, so we have machine working on Android devices, which is, again, really powerful. We can go ahead and close out of that. Okay, so this is a pretty simple script. If you look at it, we have the AR projector manager. I have an AR camera because we're gonna be needing the forward vector for the AR camera and actually the original position. I also have a list of prefabs which we're gonna be randomizing to be, be basically be able to, to shoot different, different balls. I also have a force that we can also change from the inspector options. And then I'm using a platform agnostic input which is something that Niantic provides and this is cool because we can test it with the mouse and we can also test it with, with touches. So in our case, we're gonna be able to use the, the mock functionality and also use it on the device itself. So we're just basically checking to make sure if we have any touch any touches on the screen or basically any clicks. And if we don't, then we return. Otherwise, we just get the touch. And if we're starting to touch the screen, we're gonna be basically launching a projectile. I'm gonna be randomizing which one I'm gonna be getting from, from this array and then it's gonna go from zero and basically to the length of the array. And then I'll just pick one of them and the prefab that I'm going to be, that I'm going to be creating is going to be coming from this list that we randomized. And then I'm gonna be using the original, just the position of the air camera at that point. Not the original, but the position of the camera at the point where the camera is. And then the quaternion, the rotation is just gonna be set to identity. Then I'm gonna get the rigid body of the, in this case, let's say that we have the basketball, we're just gonna get the rigid body of the basketball and we're gonna be applying a force which is gonna be using the air camera transfer forward vector and we're just gonna be multiplying that by the force that we have in here. So how do we set it up? Let's go ahead and go back into Unity here and then we're just gonna be creating a new component which we'll call the AR Projectile Manager. So I'll just go ahead and create a a new empty and I'll just do AI projectile manager. And then we can just say AI projectile manager. And you can see that we have all the different options that we set up in the script. So the first one that we need to associate is gonna be the AR scene camera. I also need to add the different projectiles so we can go ahead and add a couple of them in here. I have some of them that are pretty simple. They, they are under the prefabs folder and you can just drag and drop those, drag and drop this one because I'm not gonna be able to to provide you with the other ones, but I'll show you where those, those ones are as well if, in case you guys wanna get that asset and just test it with those assets. And then what we can do is once we associate it, we can just go ahead and drag this and make it make it a prefab. So let's go ahead and test and see if this is going to work with the, the new projectile implementation that we just added. And then, so if we go around in here, it's gonna get closer and see, you guys can see the things are kind of working, but I'm not seeing the collisions, and I'm actually glad that I'm not seeing the collisions, right? Because that way we can we can troubleshoot it. 
So if you go in here, the Air Mesh Manager, you can see that I have the mesh chunk. I never associate it with the one that has the collider. So if I associate it with the collider and double click on it, you're gonna see that this one just has, in addition to the mesh render and the mesh filter, we have the mesh collider. So that shows you that, you know, once we associate it with the correct, you know, the correct prefab, then things should work. So if I go here, you can see now maybe, there we go. Takes a minute to think for things to start to work. And I can probably get closer in here and you can kind of see that all of them are getting generated. And again, we can see things, you know, happening and that's the power of using the, the mocking tools. So what if we wanted to associate it with the, with the other one, right? Let's go ahead and add, perhaps go back in here. And I have a couple of prefabs in here. Again, these are not gonna be available, but you guys can get it, but I can just go ahead and associate them here fairly quick and then show you how it's going to look with the, we can probably just add maybe, maybe two more and I think it's, we can add a soccer ball. I think it'll be cool to see, maybe a volleyball. And I think that's a good variety. So now if we go back and hit play, we should see now that we have the new game objects getting instantiated. And if I get closer, we can just probably start shooting. Those are, these ones are cool because some of them are bigger than other ones, right? We can, we have more variety. And you guys can kind of see how those work. And if they collide with each other, I think it gives you, it just gives you more different examples to play with. There's also like a golf in here, a golf ball that you can use, which is pretty tiny, but you know, if I'm using the, if I'm doing this in Unity, we can get closer. If you wanted to troubleshoot it, maybe the collider on this one wasn't the right one and you wanted to change it, or maybe you wanted to change the size. Some of those things are pretty, you know, are pretty powerful when it comes to, when it comes to the bugging meshing in real time. So now that you saw how that works. So if you wanted to download these, you can also go into here into GitHub and go into github.com Dilmer V and if you go to my overview, you're gonna find all different examples and, and different repos that I provide for free. And also some of them through Patreon. So if you want, guys wanna get one that is not here, but I cover in a previous video, you guys can become patrons by going to repos and then look at the latest one, which is public. This is gonna be completely free. It's open source, so you can go and go ahead and clone it. And then my last commit was about an hour ago, so you should have everything available for you in there. So. I think that's everything that I wanted to show you today, just, just as a kind of like an FYI. This works with iOS and Android, and I think that's one of the big powers of when it comes to light ship ARDK. If you guys wanna see more videos with this technology, and I'm gonna be covering a lot more things with, with ARDK in the future videos, including VPS, also including using, you know, how do you use anchors, how do you use image tracking, how do we convert from an AR Foundation application to using Lightship ARDK, and then a lot more. And if you guys want you know, to provide me with some comments and things that you may think that are helpful or might help you in your own career, let me know in the comments below. So thank you very much, guys.